Hi, ME433. This week you'll be coming into the Mechatronics Lab to assemble your own lab kit. By Wednesday, your card will be active, so you'll be able to get into the Mechatronics Lab door, which is locked, and the outside of Ford, but Ford is unlocked right now. The Mechatronics Lab is in the basement, so you come down uh, the stairs from the front entry of Ford, you pass the machine shop, you tap your wild card to the card reader, the door opens, and this is the Mechatronics Lab. Um, perpetually messy, don't worry about that. And what you're going to do is walk down this line and assemble your lab kit. So the first thing is to fold up your own box. Here's a stack of boxes. Um, make a box. Then you're going to take two breadboards. Then you're gonna take one NP Lab Snap. This is the programmer for the pick. Um, it doesn't come with USB cable. You're going to need three USB cables. So we got three micro USB cables, uh, one for the snap, one for power for the pick, and one for a USB to UART converter. Then you'll see a series of white boxes. The first set of boxes, we have a USB adapter and a 3.3 volt regulator. Um, they come in little baggies, so you're going to take one of each. And these are the two things that you'll need to solder for the first week of class. Uh, lots of other things will need to be soldered too, but those don't need to be soldered immediately. I'll make another video where I can zoom in and show you exactly how to solder these, and I'll show you where those solder benches are in a second. So take one of each from the first two boxes. Then the next two boxes, we have the USB to UART converter and an RC servo, so take one of each of those. Then we have a speaker and an H-bridge. Um, these you don't need to solder immediately, but I would solder two wires onto the speaker and the header pins onto the H-bridge. Uh, the next box, we have a camera and a DuPont cable with male and female ends. So here's a little camera module that we'll be playing with. And it comes with this double row of header pins, which is kind of annoying to use. So we'll take this DuPont cable um, that has female ends that can plug into the servo, uh, sorry, the camera and then as male ends that can plug into your breadboard. Take one of each of those. The next boxes have an LCD screen and an I2S microphone. So here's a little LCD screen um, and here's the I2S mic. Those don't need to be soldered yet. Uh, the next one we've got an IMU and an I2S amplifier. Um, so here's the IMU board. Here's the I2S amplifier. So obviously we'll be playing with the microphone and amplifier and a speaker at some point. And the final two boxes, uh, NeoPixels and potentiometers. So the NeoPixels come in a silver bag. There's five of them. So take one bag that has five and then take one or two potentiometers. I don't know what we'll do with those, but they're kind of useful. Okay, then you'll come over to um, uh, this um, lab bench in the back left and there's a box of wire strippers. So if you need another pair of wire strippers, um, and you'll probably need some more wire, a bundle of wire. And then finally, the last one, which is kind of the most complicated in this uh, tray bin are lots of individual components. So you're gonna take one set of three push buttons, um, one set of roughly uh, 10, 10K resistors, those are for the buttons, one set of roughly 10, 330 ohm resistors, uh, those are for the LEDs, um, one, one or two sets of these uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Those are bypass capacitors. Um, then we have extra long header pins. They're long on both sides. You need one thing of six and one of three. So these snap apart. So take them at six and snap and take another set at three and snap. The six is for the programmer. Uh, the three are for the RC servo. Then there are slide switches. I don't know if we'll use these yet, but they're kind of neat. Take one of those. Then we get LEDs. Take uh, three or four red LEDs, three or four green LEDs, three or four yellow LEDs. Then we have a eight megahertz resonator. This is the clock source for the pick, so take one of those. Then at the bottom, we have our integrated circuits. So the main one you definitely need, the PIC32 MX170. Um, that's the microcontroller. Uh, then an eight pin, um, flash memory chip. We'll use this with the speaker and microphone. 
a uh, dual DAC chip. So it's just a, uh, a chip that will make analog voltages and an I2C pin I.O. expander. So when you look at the PIC, the PIC doesn't have a whole lot of pins. So this I.O. expander will let us get more pins. Um, a trick with these chips, because when they come from the factory, when you look down the front of them, like that, um, the pins don't come out at 90 degrees. So when you try to stick this in the breadboard, sometimes the pins will bend, or just being in a tray like this is a bad idea because the pins might bend. So you'll want to make sure that they become a little bit more square relative to the body of the chip by you take it and with two hands, uh, hold it like this and push it against a table so that all of the pins bend at the same time. So you kind of push one side, flip it over, push the other side, just a few degrees more so that they're in a little more and then you could stick them into your breadboard. So just be careful that when, when the chips are so big, when you stick it in a breadboard that you don't bend all the pins. Okay, if you need more wire, a bundle of wire, um, I keep the wire on the right side of the lab. They're all tied together. So what you do is you could just cut off the bundle that's there and then make a bundle for the next person who, who comes along. If you cut this and let them uh, shoot all over, then it's hard. So um, there's a pair of wire strippers here. You can uh, make your own wire and bundle. Or on every single lap bench, um, we have more wire. So on the right side of the lap bench is solid core wire. That's the kind you want to use with your breadboard. If you take a wire and you bend it and it stays bent, that's a single core wire. There's one wire in there. That works great with the breadboard. Um, the other kinds of wire that we have are stranded. So if you take the strand wire and you bend it, it, it doesn't, it kind of bounces back because there's seven to 12 strands of wire in here. This is great for long dangly wires on projects, but it doesn't work well with the breadboard. So don't use the stranded wires. Um, always use the solid core wire. And then finally, there's a roll of solder at the end that's useful for soldering something. Um, every lab bench has one of these Hakko soldering irons and you would uh, sit here at the bench. Um, you don't have to cut the solder off the reel. You could just pull it out and you could solder right here. Um, all the parts that you need to solder. I will make another video with soldering instructions uh, so you can see exactly how to solder. There's eight lab benches in here. We have eight soldering irons, but right now due to code restrictions, we can only have four people at a time in the lab. Um, so if you come in and there's four people here, just wait outside for them to finish soldering, then come in, build your kit and take off. Um, probably soldering will take almost an hour if you try to do all the chips. So I would recommend just coming in and the only two that you need to solder are the micro USB breakout board and the 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, once you get some practice doing that, you can come back another day um, and we'll do the other components. Actually, I'll change my mind right now. Do the first three. Do the micro USB connector, the 3.3 volt regulator, and this, it says CP2104 friend. This is our USB to UART. Um, connector. So we'll play with these in the first week. So have those three soldered. Everything else you can come back and solder later.